Hey guys, and welcome to Gwent, the Witcher card game. My name is Jagoras, and today is Fan Friday, which means I'm going to be checking out some decks made by you guys, the fans. Before you all say it in the comments, I am aware it is not Friday, but it is Friday in my heart, so stuff you guys. We're going to do Fan Friday today, also because I'm kind of late, but whatever, whatever. Anyway, uh, I actually have two Ardle lists for you guys today because I got two different lists submitted, one by a player called Rifki and another by Jay McNay. I apologize if I've messed up your names, but I have two Ardle lists for you guys. If you would like to submit your list for Fan Friday, what you can do is you can post your deck list on my Discord. Go to the Discord link in the description below this video, post your deck in the Fan Friday's channel, and maybe next week on actual Friday, I will be playing your list. Now, I want to start off with the, the Rifki list. This is a spies list. So Ardle can be utilized to seize an enemy unit with three or less power. And the value of that unit is increased by putting tactic cards in your deck. But this deck doesn't actually rely on tactics at all because this deck is all about playing spies and seizing an extra Imperial Enforcer. And you might be saying, well, Jagras, how am I going to have an Imperial Enforcer on my opponent's side of the board? Because, you know, I'm playing this deck. I don't know what they're playing. But with Operator... You can spawn and summon a base copy of a bronze unit from your hand to this row on each player's side. So you basically pick a unit in your hand, spawn one on your side, spawn one on the other side. And then with Operator, that's going to put one of your units on your opponent's side of the board, which you can then seize with Ardle. So that'll be the Imperial Enforcer, which uh, has an order to damage an enemy by two and gains a charge whenever you play a spying unit. So you're going to be dealing more damage every time you play spies. So that is why... Uh, that's kind of the core of the deck. Then we have some other ways of obtaining extra enforcers. We can use Letho, transform into a copy of another uh, unit on the battlefield, so we can transform into a enforcer. Similarly, we have uh, Artorius Vigo, uh, who cr you create and play a one power copy of a bronze unit from your starting deck. So we can utilize this to try and make an extra enforcer. So those will get our enforcers on the board. Once they're on the board, we can then you know start dealing damage by playing spies. Um, we have spies in terms of... Um, Joaquim, so spying, play the non the top non-spying unit from your deck, then boost it by eight. So we play the top unit in our deck, and we can control what the top unit in our deck is with Albrick. Uh, we place him on the range row and then move any card to the top of our deck and boost it by two. So more spies, we also have Roderick, he's a spy. Look at two random gold cards from your deck, then play one. Pretty useful. Then also Cantarella, play the top card from your opponent's deck. So that could be a little bit risky, but again, she's a spy. Um, and similarly, Prince Willem, play a random gold card from your deck. So we've got some options with our gold spies. We also have the emissaries, boost an allied unit by seven. So that's some more spies, uh, which we can resurrect with experimental remedy, play a bronze unit from your opponent's graveyard. Enemy spies go to their graveyard, so we can then bring one of those spies back onto the board. Uh, similarly, we have Rot Tosser, deploy range spawner, play a cow carcass. So we play a cow carcass on the opposite side of the board, which is a spy. And this has been changed, so on enemy turn end, it poisons adjacent units. And then poison, if you poison a unit twice, then it dies. So we also have Fangs of the Empire, deploy given enemy, use it poison. So if you can get two poisons on something, you're going to kill it uh, for tool removal. Um, then looking back up at the gold cards in this deck, we also have the Serret and Orcs combo. So Orcs locks a unit. If you have Serret in hand, you lock all copies of that unit in their hand deck and on their side of the battlefield. Serret does three damage. If you have Orcs in hand, it does five damage. And looking at this deck, just a quick change I want to make just right now, because I do feel like it's going to make the deck better, is we have Thunderbolt. And Thunderbolt is eight provisions for effectively six points. I think it's overcosted. It does give you a way of protecting your enforcers and you know being able to protect your enforcers is nice. However, I think for the provision cost and the fact that we're already running Serret and Orcs, you could take this out and put Letho of Gullet, Goulet, whatever you want to call him. We could put Letho in the deck because he's also eight provisions. And you can see that he synergizes with Orcs and with Serret. Because if you have Orcs in hand, then you also lock when you play Letho. And if you have Serret in hand, you deal three damage. So, you know, that can fit quite nicely into that slot in the deck. Is at worst six provisions, so same sort of value as Thunderbolt. Um, and I quite like that personally. Okay, so moving down this list, we also have a couple Imperial Brigades. We can use these to thin the deck a little bit, which is quite nice considering Witchers aren't really, you know, in the meta anymore. Vic of our novice, we can draw a card, then place a card from our hand at the top of our deck, which we can synergize either with Albrecht or with Joachim. If we want to, you know, determine what we're going to pull, then we can put a card on top of our deck with the novice. Uh, similarly to that, we have Duchess's Informant, and this is our last spying card. Spawn and play a base copy of a non-spying bronze enemy unit. A little bit of a risk, depending on what we find in our opponent's deck, 
But overall, you know, I think this is an interesting deck. I think the Spying Archetypes may be listening, listening, missing a couple cards, but I really like what Rifki's, you know, trying to do with the archetype. Um, and I think it's a pretty cool deck. And I, I do like the Letho change though. That would be my kind of major change. But without further ado, let's jump into a game and play this deck in action. And if you enjoy this video, maybe hit that like button. And Mahian Guan Bleat. Okay, so we're up against Dana. She has a lot of moving parts, and we actually got both enforcers uh, in this starting hand, which is absolutely fantastic because it means that we can play our strategy. We're going to mulligan one Imperial Brigade uh, in order to kind of deal with, um, well, thinning thinning that out. And I'm also going to mulligan the Fangs, I think. If I don't have double poison, you don't need a Fangs of the Empire, although we did get more poison there. I want to preface this by saying. Oh, we can lock that, which is insane. I want to preface this by saying that I have. Um, we'll lock it with Letho, I think. I wanna, I wanna open by saying that I have played this deck twice before this, and in both games found zero enforcers and just lost. Okay, so this deck, I think the strategy of the spies is it, there's too many parts. Like I didn't find Albrick, I didn't find any enforcers until the final round. At which point, you know, you're just spending cards to try and keep abreast and it's really not working out so i do want to i do want to just mention that a little because like i said i do feel like it was a bit of an issue uh with, with how the deck plays so we're gonna just put that one out there uh in terms of the hand now let's just thin we do want to play uh, an imperial enforcer but we also want to find operator and again we don't have tools to find cards i mean we could try and roderick um and maybe find it us. but we also could find necromancy we could find letho you know what if we get necromancy letho uh it's it's kind of a risk with trying to find our tools that we're going to have kind of a hard time uh doing that so i don't know i don't know we'll kind of we'll kind of see i'm not really sure what the best way forward here is but i think maybe we could play one enforcer but then if it gets removed you know we've just lost that enforcer because alternatively we could try and find one with vigo you know that's kind of what he's for is is make it is, is playing an enforcer so maybe we spend that for now the senses and we didn't get one but we did get a vic of our novice which i quite like here so let's utilize that As you wish, master. and we will put the i think we put the rock toster on the top of our deck Which is good, end turn. Not quite how we wanted to spend him. You know, we were trying to get an enforcer to see if we could play that strategy. Uh, and as it is, we couldn't, which is kind of a problem. But never mind. We can lock this. If we lock this, we deny the whole harmony thing. But we could also just remove it with Seret. And I'm kind of okay with that. And we've already seen how adding Letho to the deck, you know, provides value. So I think for this round, I'm just going to kind of see, see how it goes. Uh, with things like um, thinning the clearing the board and stuff and try and hold off on playing spies if I can get away with it at least until my opponent has played some you know removal I don't know if you risk I don't know if you do risk the Roderick or not the thing is there's so much chance oh, in no. this list like we don't know what gold cards we're gonna find this will play a gold card and we'll have a choice so we can put something good on the top of our list sure but you know is it gonna be what we want to see and if we play the Imperial Forcer you know is it gonna get instantly removed if we have one in the graveyard, it's not necessarily a bad thing. So I'm going to play one now just because we do have the option to necromance here, right? So then if we play Roderick, then it's not such a problem. Okay, he's not dead. He's not dead, boys and girls. So I think this is where we can then maybe take the risk and play Roderick. Or we play this and copy one of her units, but you know, none of them are that exciting. Okay, let's do it. What is it you want? And then we get another spy. So let's play Cantarella. No one can hide from me. Dragoon. I'm just gonna spread his units out. And then we'll start shooting things. And clear up the board. And actually, that was pretty good. You know, when you can get your spies triggered, I would say that was actually a pretty good play. We got a lot of value out of that. Uh, and we were able to chain spies. So this is what I mean, like, it's high risk, high reward this deck in some ways. But I, I feel like it's maybe a little bit too inconsistent to be consistently good on the rank ladder. You had a lock and you didn't play it. That's adorable. 
Absolutely adorable. So, so, we could pass here. We're on even. She'd have to go down two cards. Which means I don't think she can regain her card, right? If she wants to get ahead. I think this is the pass. Because she'd have to play one more, which means she's two cards down, which means she can never get up to ten cards. Okay, I like this pass. I like this pass a lot. Now let's just find Operator, or, you know, I'll break our way to get Operator. And we'll be Gucci. Okay, this uh, is going to give us another Spy. Let's throw this. This is going to give us another one of these if she doesn't remove it. Is Albrecht going to help us? Because we don't have a way of drawing the top card, right? So I think we probably throw Albrecht. Okay, Joaquim. Joaquim could be very good. I guess Joaquim with Albrecht actually would have been perfect for us because we could have used it for off the Operator. Um, as it is, you know, that is not an option. So... Let's just play this and hope it doesn't get removed. We didn't find Necromancy, and we didn't find Operator. Although maybe I should have played, maybe I should have played Wikim first in order to get that kind of on the go. Ah, this is great. So now we have two of these, which is really really good. So every time we play a spy, we're going to get a little bit of a benefit, which is which is fantastic. Our opponent, however, is not playing targetable cards. Which is, you know, slightly problematic. But then these guys can hold their charges, right? It's not really a huge issue. So if we play this and boost that, they gain charges. So it's kind of okay. I think. It's actually probably fine. We've lived in isolation for too bloody long. Now the issue we may have is that I need to make a copy of a bronze unit. So if I kill everything, that's going to be a slight problem. Hmm. I mean, she's probably going to play another bronze unit, right? Let's play this. We'll take the risk. Poisoner. Feeling a bit peckish. So I guess we can start shooting things. I mean, we're not going to kill anything with poison. Do we kill this? I mean, it's a waste of a point, but I think we probably do, just in case she removes it. And now we are, wow, 26 points up. I mean, she does have our leader, though, but we have managed to remove a huge number of her units, which is kind of really, really good. And we can resurrect something from her graveyard. So with that spy, we can play Emissary again if we want. Oh, and no value out of Barnabas is not what she wants to see there. But I don't want to make my units... Well, actually, you know, tall units is maybe not necessarily a problem. I was going to say I don't want to make them too tall. But as it is, it's probably fine. So let's just shoot these. And really just denying her value because she couldn't remove the enforcers. So this is the true power of the enforcers. If you can get them to work. But like I said, I had a couple games where they just didn't work. Um, so in that instance, you know kind of a problem. My back and I'll scratch you. We actually haven't ardled anything. I just realized I haven't used ardle at all. Uh, we're going to get a one by the looks of things. I probably should have shot that uh, dude down and then used the leader. I completely forgot about my leader, if I'm completely honest with you. But we can maybe use our Empress to enable um, a steal off of something. The wind whistles, Willow's whip. So what's she going to shuffle? I guess fave and pull a different dryad. Okay, so there we go. We've enabled we've enabled our Ardle now. It's really good. Not yet recovered. Oh wow, that is a strategy. Ha. Huh. I think I just got gibbed. <laughs> like, there's nothing that I can steal. I can steal a one, because I fucked that up. And then we can shoot this a couple times. But <laughs> Oh my god. That is a strategy right there. I've never seen anyone do that. Wow. Wow. Not enough points. I think I'm just gonna give up with this deck. Like, it's such a cool idea, and we did have really good value with the enforcers. Um, we didn't really get a good Ardle play, which was my own fault, and we didn't really get value out of that one spy that copies the bronzes, because there was no bronzes. But I just think there's too much RNG in the deck, and as a result of that, I feel like 
it's very difficult to play. Like, it's a fun deck, but I don't know if I would take it on the rank ladder, is what I will say. I think it's really fun, I think it's really cool, but I think it's kind of frustrating when it doesn't work. Okay, so next up we have Jay McNay's Ardle deck. And this is a much more kind of mid-range Nilfgaard deck with tactics kind of added in. So we have our four tactics. We have Vigo's Muzzle, lock an enemy unit with five or less power and seize it. And we have Treason, choose an adjacent uh, an enemy unit, then damage adjacent units by its power. And then we have the two assassinations. So this means with Ardle, we're going to be able to steal a four point unit. On top of that, we have kind of very standard tools in Nilfgaard. We have Roach and a Seer. Uh, a Seer you can use to shuffle Roach back into your deck and then immediately thin her back out. So that's pretty good. We have the Serret uh, Orcs Letho combo that I just showed you guys, which is pretty kind of standard. We have Shillard, which is really great in round three if you want to play it to, you know, remove power from your opponent's hand. I recommend playing it round three because you can... They can't then mulligan the one point card, right? Then we have Leo for tall removal, but can also be used to remove Witchers. We have Gregor, who is just like very common at the moment. He is a four point unit, um, damage an enemy unit by one, and then boost health by uh, six and gain a shield, which is quite, you know, easy to achieve. So he's typically a 10 point play. Then we have Gimpy, which is good for, you know, damaging multiple copies of a card. We have Albrick, which we've seen before. We can put cards on the top of our deck. Although Albrick, if you find them in round three, kind of awkward. Peter for reset. So, okay, these are all just good value cards for their provisions. Couple enough Guardian Knights. If you play this before your opponent plays any cards, it's just a six-point play. Armored Armor Cavalry gives you some extra locks. Infiltrator can brick your opponent's deck because on round end it shuffles into the deck. Nausicaa Sergeants boosts when you play Deploy, and we got lots of Deploy. And then Slave Driver synergizes with Locks. So this is a much more comfortable deck in terms of you don't need too much synergy, right? So let's jump into a ranked game now, and we'll see how this deck compares to the Spies Ardle deck. The North must be destroyed. Okay, so we're up against Hensel, which means all of these locks are going to be quite useful. Also, Gimpy, very important in case it's a Draug list. Sometimes, though, this is a unitless list, which can be a bit of a pain in the butt to play against. Uh, in terms of the mulligans, I think we're going to throw a Slave Driver. Are we going first? Or we're going first, so this is fine. Um, we don't have any locks, so the other Slave Driver as well. And then, do we keep an Infiltrator? I don't hate them. Do we really need two? I don't know. I think I'm going to throw one. And we got Serra instead. Which is which is nice. We don't have Letho or Orcs, I don't think, though. Though it's okay to play her without, you know. You don't have to play the uh, the other tools. Cool. So do we boost the Nausicaa Sergeant? I don't know. We can boost the Nausicaa Sergeant. Actually, no. I'm telling a lie. We play the North Guardian Knight first. Order will triumph. <laughs> it must triumph. Come on, me. Although... Oh, God. I just realized what I just said. Ignore that. <laughs> Do better, me. Uh, you can also use enough Guardian Knight in synergy with Leo in order to give yourself a target. Okay, summoning circle. I can't do anything about this. So that's the thing. We're gonna just play this out. <laughs> End our turn. And we're just looking for a useful four to steal with Ardle. You know, it's not a huge tool in the tactics toolbox, but it's not awful. Okay, so what can we do about this? Not a whole lot by the looks of things. I mean, I can deal three damage to it and then kill it with Gregor, which I don't hate as a strategy. But it does mean we've, you know, cost ourselves a small part of our um, combo. We've also played quite a lot of points at this stage. So we may see Hensel come out now on the on the trebuchet, but I think if he was going to Hensel, the trebuchet he would have done it already. Really? This enables our Gregor, though, but then we've spent quite a lot on one round. Which is slightly awkward. And then it's like, do we want to remove Vess, or do we not care about the zeal? I think we just don't care about the zeal. I'm going to play our good friend Gregor here. And just take the 10 points, I think. We do have to be a little bit wary of the summoning circle, though. Uh, we could pass, though. Maybe I should have used my, um, I think I maybe should have used my tactical advantage there, because we had the option to pass, because as this gets bigger, it's going to become more and more of a problem. Um, we actually also could have Ardled Vess, which would have been quite a smart play now that I think about it. But then are we spending too much on this round? Probably. The answer there is probably, considering he has three points on the board. But I think... Destiny is unswerving. Cheated. It will not I was going to say, I think if he's not ahead of us now, this is where we take the pass. 
and he's not ahead of us now. So I actually, I don't hate the pass here. I just wish I'd played this first, you know, to give us a bit more wiggle room. Um, because I'm just a little bit worried about the summoning circle. The alternative is we play the tactical advantage and we play infiltrator in order to brick his hand a little bit and take this one more step. I also do want to play Albrick. But then, you know, if he does pass, we can play Albrick or we can play Infiltrator on the next round. Because, we'll, yeah, we'll have a couple cards to play next round, so we have the option to kind of play them. So I think this is probably the pass. You know, the question is how important do you think Last Say is? And in this situation, I don't think it's, you know, hugely pertinent. I think the Summoning Circle kind of forced us out of the round a little bit, just because there's nothing we can do about it. And that's something where I'm a bit scared of the tempo the longer we play this. Because we passed on six, we'll be on nine cards next round, which means we can play both Albrick and the Infiltrator. Uh, and hopefully that should be fine, because he'll only play one card, because he'll be on eight. Um, so that should surpass him with the seven points, unless he plays something tall, in which case we maybe have to spend a little, but we can always mulligan uh, the Infiltrator then. Damn it. Yeah, so there you go. See, he, he take the, took the shield off Gregor and then spent his Witcher. I, I think that's a good play here. If you don't think I'm going to go Toll, then spending the Witcher is kind of fine. Um, Asir is good. Slave infantry is okay. But, you know, really this deck thrives on its it, on its gold cards. We have a lot of those. And we'd quite like to find Muzzle here. So let's throw the Sergeant. And let's throw the Slave Driver. I've got another Infiltrator. So, double Infiltrator, probably Mulligan Fodder. Oh, that's interesting. So I want to see if that's him just throwing away a card. So for now, let's play this. This will put us ahead if, not by strength, if he chooses to pass, by um, which I think he probably will. Whereas if he's playing into this round, then we would expect to see him play more here. Okay, he's playing into this round. So if I damage the botchling by one point, I can steal it. Or we just lock it. I don't hate the lock here because we don't have a way to damage it by one point. So I think we just... We take the lock. We're not getting ahead of him. If he's played into this round, we could try and get ahead of him. Um, which is, you know, not an awful strategy. But it's not exactly what we want to do either. We can restore this and get six points off it, which is good. Um... I'm thinking how, you know, can we just destroy this? Do we have to remove the shield? I don't know how shield works. It's the next instance of damage, but destroying something isn't necessarily damage, right? I don't know. I don't know how this works. Do we, let's just test this. Yeah, that's why I thought it would just destroy it, right? I thought that would be just like, bye bye, peace out, you know, we're done here. But actually, not the case. And it gave us a, a you know, a target for our uh, our Leo, which is good. We haven't played Albrick here, though. And that's going to put us ahead, so I think we take the Albrick rather than the Infiltrator. And we can boost whatever we draw. So the question then becomes, would we rather draw a Lock? I think we probably would. Or a Muzzle? Muzzle's really good, though, because that's at least 10 points. So maybe we take the Muzzle to deny an engine, but then we lose the boost off of Albrick, right? Albrick gives you a two-point boost. But I think in this instance, that maybe Muzzle is still the correct choice. Okay, so now we pass. We got ahead by one point. We found a target for Leo, so that was pretty good. And then here we can just mul uh, mulligan the Infiltrator because that's not gonna be very useful. So, bye bye There's a lock. I think we can possibly remove the Slave Driver. And we got a Slave Driver, <laughs> for God's sake. Okay, so, so let's play Shillard. And this is where you play Shillard because they have a full hand of cards, so you're going to hit their tallest one and make it a one, which is pretty nice. We have two Caesars, so we can kind of deny some of his engines. We have a lock. We have some, you know, pretty nice removal. Um, a Seer is not bad here. Let's just play a Seer. It kind of just, you know, kills a little bit of time. Put the Roach on the board. End our turn. He hasn't played... He hasn't played Henselt. I'm wondering if we can deny Henselt targets. I don't think we probably have enough removal for it, unless his hand is a bit awkward. Then we have to kind of predict what his Henselt target is going to be. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> he just, he just shilladed me. 
You cheeky bugger. We can reset this though, with uh, with Peter. So you know, it's probably okay. This has to reach. Okay, that's fine. So we'll just play this. I don't really hate this. We also have a four on the board now, which means we've got full value from Ardle. Although I'm gonna try and save it for an engine. I think that is probably wise. And we're gonna guarantee Gimpy value from his Hensel target as well, because there should be two bronze copies or two bronze units on a board. So do we just lock that? Is it a waste of the lock? I don't I don't think that it is, right? You know, how many turns is this? We still have muzzle, we still have Ardle. I don't hate it. And it's not his, we know it's not his Hensel target because he played one in the previous round. So, I think that's fine. It also gives us more damage on our slave driver. Okay, so I think that's probably, uh, that's probably what we Ardle. Because we still have muzzle as well, um, which is pretty nice. We're going to put this back up to six. And yeah, we're pretty comfortably ahead. He hasn't used Hensel. He doesn't have another trebuchet, but we can kill that trebuchet. Oh, I tell a lie. We can still kill that trebuchet with Gimpy, which I think is pretty good. So let's do that. Time for a Take the Gimpy. And then we can still uh, utilize Muzzle on this, depending on how this goes down. You know, we've got some good targets. Oh, I can trigger this. Damage unit by one charge. So it looks like he's just really trying to use these. Um, so I guess what we can do is shoot it and then just kill it. Fight for the Emperor and you might be free. And yeah, now we're 10 points ahead, but one card down. We have a 10 point play in hand. Well, actually it's not a 10 point play because we don't necessarily have the target for it. We're gonna take a four, it's an eight point play. Let's do that. It also gives us another lock, and there's the victory. So, pretty comfortable victory there against Hensel, whereas the Enforcers game, admittedly, her kind of crazy garrison play at the end, totally took me by surprise. But I definitely saw more success with this more kind of mid-range Nilfgaard list, and this just kind of goes to show how Nilfgaard is in the meta, right? Nilfgaard at the moment, they have some really cool tools, um, but their engine decks aren't quite there, and the consistency in the engine decks is not quite there. So for me, if I was going to play an Ardle list, I would probably pick one more similar to Jay McNay's for the rank ladder than Rifkey's. But Rifkey's I do think is a really fun list to play. And for playing games off ladder, I think like that's the kind of deck that I love to play. It's just that if you want to climb the ladder, you know, you're going to be a bit more hard pushed, um, especially as you kind of get up the ranks. So that is Fan Friday. I don't usually look at two different lists. That was a bit different. Um, so let me know if you did like that format in the comments below. Uh, if you have a deck yourself, you can post it in my Discord, uh, which is in the description in the Fan Friday's text channel. Uh, I know it's not Friday, so again, be quiet about that. But if you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. Let me know what you guys think of the decks in the comment below. Do you prefer the more mid-range list or do you prefer the spies list? You know, what's your favorite? I, I would like to hear from you guys a little a few opinions. Other than that, have an awesome, awesome day. Thank you so much for hanging out and keeping me company. Uh, even though, you know, I recorded this in the past, so you're not really keeping me company, huh? I'm going to shut up now. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day and hope they'll catch you in the next video.